The last thing you want to think about when you're away from home is whether you left the coffee machine on or left the door open, like a garage door. Whether it's for security or just peace of mind, it's worth putting systems and processes in place so that you can spend less time worrying about what's happening at home and more time enjoying your travels. Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Ernest from TripAstute. In this video, I'm going to share some simple smart home upgrades that I've set up to improve my daily life and give me peace of mind while traveling. A lot of times when we think about smart devices in the home, it's in the context of home security. And honestly, in the last few years, we've seen so many of these types of security devices become commonplace in homes. For example, it seems like everyone has a Ring doorbell camera nowadays. Companies like Ring and Sleepy Safe even have full alarm systems, which are giving traditional alarm companies a lot of competition. However, making your home smart doesn't have to be all about alarms and cameras. In fact, I would argue that there is so much more potential to help make your home life and travels so much easier and safer through some simple automations and connections. And since most of you are spending more time at home because of the pandemic, now might be a good time to think about upgrading parts of your home. So I thought I'd walk through a couple of smart home upgrades that I've created at my place that help me keep tabs on things at my house, whether I'm upstairs or even away from home. These upgrades and automations may reveal some of my OCD tendencies, but to be honest, I feel like they really have given me peace of mind and incrementally saved me time. The first set of smart home upgrades are contact sensors. For reference, I use Ysense contact sensors for the job. They cost about $5 each, so they're not a big investment. I use them to help track when things are left open or even to trigger certain lights in my house. While doors and windows are obvious places to use contact sensors, there are a lot of uses for these devices. For example, I've set them up on my refrigerator and freezer doors and scheduled a notification to occur if either is open for more than five minutes. It might seem like overkill, but in the past year, I accidentally left our refrigerator door cracked open while rushing out to work. While most of my groceries were okay, I hated the thought of all the wasted energy. I also mounted a contact sensor on the railing of my garage door. I then set a notification to occur if the garage door is left open for 10 minutes. This has actually come in handy several times, and because of it, I decided to add a device to trigger my garage door to close, but I'll get to that later on in the video. The next set of devices are switches. These are often Wi-Fi connected devices that supply power between a device and an outlet. They typically have one function, which is to turn on or off. There's so many of these devices available today from a variety of brands. In this example, I'm also using Wise plugs, which cost around $8 each and integrate with other Wise devices. I have my plugs set up with my living room floor lamps and my coffee machine. The floor lamps are triggered during certain times of the day if motion is detected, which I'll cover next. The coffee machine plug is set to only turn on during the morning hours. This is because I have a bad habit of leaving it on all day. It's not as dangerous since I'm working from home at the moment, but when I used to commute to work, there were many times where I wondered if I had left it on. This makes sure that even if I leave it on, the plug will eventually shut off electricity at a certain time. And remember how I mentioned that I set up a contact sensor to alert me when my garage door is left open? Well, I accidentally left it open and was alerted while driving from Los Angeles to Orange County a few months ago and had to make a trip back to close my garage door since I didn't want my camera gear to be left out and stolen. I decided at that point that I wanted to take it to the next level and have the ability to remotely operate the garage door through Wi-Fi. What I found is that there are a lot of expensive commercial systems out there that can do it. However, I didn't want to invest in an expensive setup, especially since we're renting our house. I ended up stumbling upon an article on how to do it for only $15 using a device called a Shelly One. The Shelly One is similar to a plug switch, but is meant to integrate into more traditional home electrical setups where you may not be plugging into an outlet. Since I just needed a device to complete an electrical circuit, this solution worked perfectly. You can even use a DC power adapter from another unused device to supply power as I did. It did require some setup, but honestly, it was much easier than I expected. And for only $15 or $20 worth of supplies, it was a very cost-effective way to make a smart garage door opener. The next set of sensors that I use are motion sensors. I have a few of these in places where I don't want to place a camera, but I still want some activity to trigger other actions. For example, I have one in our living room, garage, and stairwell that are used to trigger lights. This is all done through WISE motion sensors and smart light bulbs. The WISE light bulbs are also fairly inexpensive when compared to other similar devices. I especially like having my garage and stairwell lights automated since I'm often carrying things to and from the garage. Whether it's a load of laundry or groceries, 
It's just one less thing that I need to touch or activate. The lights are also set to turn off if no motion is detected after a set period of time. Another thing that is proven to be helpful is attaching a motion sensor to our delivery box. We have a box that we set up outside of our front door for packages. I place a motion sensor under the lid, which then sends a notification to my phone whenever it detects motion. I also set up an Alexa rule that announces when a package has arrived. A package has arrived. This adds both convenience and security since I know when a delivery has been made. And in case you're wondering, I do have several cameras at my house. I have an old Canary home security camera inside my living room that monitors my house for activity when we're out. It uses a geofence to detect when people are home and has several different sensors to measure things like temperature and air quality. I did a review on it several years ago if you're interested. I actually really like the system, though there's so many new systems out there nowadays, so I don't know that I would still recommend one today if you're looking to invest in a security system. I also have two WISE cameras set up on our two main entry points. These are set to record whenever there is motion. The cameras are also the hub for various contact and motion sensors in the house. Again, I do like the WISE brand because of the cost and lack of restrictions. Each camera is only $20, which is a bargain. The cameras also allow you to record locally onto a micro SD card, which is accessible via the app. WISE also has a cloud recording subscription that is optional and inexpensive. However, for my purposes, the local recording works great and means that I'm not paying a monthly or annual fee. Lastly, I do have an old Nest smart thermometer that I use. I won't go into the details of the Nest since I know there are millions of videos on it, but it's just another device that interacts with my home setup and allows me to adjust my home temperature through Wi-Fi using an app. As you can see, all of these upgrades have practical uses when I'm home and also when I'm away. I'm obviously not traveling right now due to the pandemic, but I figured that some of these features will be helpful in the future. Most smart home devices have a vacation mode or equivalent setting that can help you look as though you're home when you're actually away. And being able to check in on what's happening in front of my house or adjusting the temperature in case there's a heat wave seems like a great use of the technology. Many people focus on the security aspect of a smart home, but I honestly think that there is so much more than just trying to catch an intruder. And if you find yourself spending more time at home, I'm hoping that this video might inspire you to start building a smarter home, especially one that can help you save time and stress when home and away. In addition, here are some things to keep in mind in case you start down this rabbit hole. Number one, use strong passwords and enable security settings. While making your home smarter is convenient, there is one drawback, and that's security. Any device that's connected to the internet is also vulnerable. That's why it's important that you use complex and unique passwords for any systems that you use. Also, I recommend enabling two-factor or multi-factor authentication whenever possible. I know I've covered it in several videos, but I highly recommend using a password manager for your passwords as well. For example, I use 1Password and it helps me to create random and complex passwords for any site and service. When I need to use it, I just enter my 1Password and the software helps me to log in. There's so many password management apps out there, so consider using one if you're someone who struggles with managing and creating unique passwords. Also, it goes without saying, but you wanna protect your home network from others. There are many security features and firewalls that you can implement, and each router is gonna have a different process for setting it up. However, at the very least, you wanna password protect your network so that others are not able to join your network and control your devices. Number two, set up dual wireless frequencies on your home Wi-Fi. One thing that I learned through this process is that many of these smart home devices operate at 2.4 gigahertz rather than five gigahertz, which is a more common frequency on newer routers. This means that you could run into connectivity problems. However, a lot of new routers are able to run dual frequencies, which allows devices to connect either through the 2.4 or five gigahertz frequency. If you encounter connectivity issues, then you wanna check the frequency broadcasted from your router. Number three, use a common smart home platform across all devices. Once you start building a smart home with different devices, you'll quickly realize that you'll have to use various apps to control them. However, companies like Amazon, Apple, and Google have smart home platforms that often integrate multiple devices. For example, I use a Google Home app to control most of the devices in my house. I still need to use individual apps for more advanced features like setting up rules or triggers, but for most basic functions, I can control it from Google Home. Number four, use switch covers. If you use any devices that run on an outlet or light that is connected to a wall switch, then you might wanna use switch covers to prevent them from being turned off. For example, I have a few outlets that are connected to a wall switch that I've covered. Also, since my stairwell lights are automated using the smart bulbs, the wall light switches need to be kept on. I bought these cheap magnetic covers that prevent me or others from turning them off. Do you have any smart home devices? 
What home automations or smart features have you found to be useful either for your daily life or travels? Please share in the comment section below. I love getting inspiration for new ideas. I've included several links in the video description in case you're interested in some of the devices that we talked about. TripleSuit does earn a percentage on some of these links. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it's an easy way to support the channel if you found our content to be valuable and helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. Also, if there's someone who you think might benefit from this video, please share it with them. It may not seem like much, but it really helps us with growing our channel and community. Hope you all are staying safe and healthy. Until next time, travel safe and travel smart.